This is a HeadGum Podcast. In 2022, let's focus on what we look forward to rather than routines we won't stick to. Tim, you've probably been been seeing adaptogens and functional mushrooms and everything lately. We know mm-hmm. that we know they're good for you, but they but they always taste too mushroomy or they don't have an enticing texture. Look, I love the taste of like a you know, like a shiitake mushroom or something like that. But you grind it up into a powder, it's not going to taste that good sometimes. Uh, yeah. And it's hard to stick to, and you don't know how much you need either. It's hard to stick to a routine that you kind of dread. Enter Wonder Day Mushroom Gummies, the world's first and best mushroom gummy that combines the power of 10 research-backed adaptogenic mushrooms, including lion's mane, reishi, and changa, incravably chef-crafted pre gummies that taste like a juicy raspberry. We dare you to eat just two a day. These things are delicious. And I've been taking these things every day, and I love them. They, they, first off, they taste good. Who, who doesn't want to start off the morning with something that tastes good? Mm-hmm. But uh, I find that they, they, they motivate me. They kind of like de stress me. They put me into a good mood. I like these things. Wonder Day mushrooms are uh, made with 10 research backed mushrooms that have been used for centuries to help people achieve homeostasis or mind body balance. Uh, they are 100% vegan and made from U.S. cultivated functional mushrooms from family farms of exceptional quality. They're so tasty and effective that they've sold out twice. Get yours to start living wonderfully before they sell out again. Go to try.plantpeople.co slash everything and get 15% off your first order with code everything. That's T-R-Y dot P-L-A-N-T. P E O P L E dot C O slash E V E R Y T H I N G. Love feeling wonderful or your money back. Hello and welcome to the Complete Guide to Everything, a podcast about everything. I'm one of your hosts, Tom. And I'm Tim. Tim, how are you doing this week? Come on, I'm raring to go. This is the best I've felt in 2022. Let's do it. Wow. Why, why, why is that? I don't know. Um, is it all the supplements we've been being uh, <laughs> given lately from sponsors? That's probably partially. And I've been, been taking yeah, a take them all at once. regimen of powders and pills and vitamins yeah, every the, day. The yeah. healthiest we've ever been, thanks to podcasting. Exactly. Who would have guessed? Podcasting can transform your life and your brain. <laughs> no, that, uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, well, I feel like I'm getting that, manic. I haven't been outside in days. Um, maybe oh, okay. this is just being stir crazy. How are you doing this week? I'm good. That's one of my problems, actually. Like, I, that's one of those things where I'm always trying to like, because I'm so bad at knowing myself, knowing like my body. <laughs> and I try and get, I've been trying to get better at like, okay, like keep track of what you're eating and doing and figure out what makes you feel good, what makes you feel bad. But the problem is, is whenever I'm like feeling good, like physically, mentally and everything, I'm like, don't, hey, don't question it too much or else it'll go away. <laughs> exactly. Instead of investigating don't what it is, this. is making you feel this way, you're just like, Pfft. It's some sort of alchemy, some sort of strange thing. <laughs> I think it's just God. I think God just yeah. decided I should feel good right now. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Instead of realizing like, no, this is the one week over the past like six months, you've gotten a decent night's sleep most of the time. <laughs> you've like gone to bed on time and woken up on time or or you've gone out for a walk. Yeah. Um, so I'm in a good mood, but I also can't account for any of my time time yeah like do you have this where weeks i had will that pass? this week i mean this is thursday and i was like it's thursday thought it's it was dangerous. tuesday do you think yeah. these supplements are doing something to our brains <laughs> yeah it's speeding up time it's yeah. great <laughs> that's exactly what we want <laughs> um I well let me tell you though i had one night this week where i did not sleep well at all uh and that was because so i've been christmas um, eve you were uh, no. <laughs> awaiting saint nicholas's visit i said this week tim not not last month 
So uh, this past Sunday, I did uh, I've been doing these Twitter. No, uh, even even more addictive, Tim. These Twitter spaces mm. where it's like a live chat and everything. I'm a I'm a Twitter uh, something or other creator for Twitter. <laughs> Nice. You should probably Twitter's, figure out what the title Twitter, is. Twitter Twitter Spaces Sparks Creator. Okay. Sparks. You're starting so a I fire. Have to do, Can't start a fire yeah. without a spark, Tom. That hey, that's what I said to them. And they were like, This guy's got it. He's in. <laughs> He's a poet. So I've been doing Twitter spaces twice a week. And this last Sunday, I did I think I'm gonna do it uh this Sunday too. If you're hearing this, it's too late. Uh <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, you say that in some form of another or another uh, every week. If you're hearing this, it's too late. It's too, yeah, usually it's just so like one person in particular. Yeah, exactly. Usually it's on a cassette that I've mailed them. <laughs> um, but uh, I did this one uh, this past Sunday, Sunday Scaries, mm. where it was like a late night paranormal talk type thing. But like with and, a sexy twist. Hey. You'll have to tune in to find out. Um, but uh, maybe I won't do it again because what what then happened that night? A, I didn't even know. I read about this later that somebody was like talking about reading a book about spooky things, and mm-hmm. like, and then spooky things started happening to me. Right. I think sometimes spooky things, if they know you're interested in spooky things, they'll come happen to you. Um. Do you think that's the that's the simplest explanation for that? <laughs> Absolutely, Tim. It's Occam's razor. All right. Um, but well, but uh, hopefully you'll agree with me for this. So uh, Sunday night, like I'm in bed, I'm I'm sleeping, and my dog gets up, and uh, you know she gets up in the middle of the night sometimes. Get, gets a little slurp of water. Mm. Um, well, that's annoying. <laughs> it's very annoying it's also annoying because then like i can't close the door at night because it's like oh she might want water yeah. and go out and get water you're not gonna put a um, bowl of water in your bedroom you'll kick that thing no. over in the dark every single <laughs> night of your oh, life oh absolutely yeah. yeah never do that plus she's a you've seen she's a real slob when she drinks it goes yeah. everywhere yeah it's true so uh i hear her like walking in and I don't hear any slurping, slurping, as I like to call it, um, for like a minute or so. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, how come I'm not hearing any uh, drinking and I'm not hearing her walking around? So, like, I finally like turn over, open up my eyes, and I can see she's wrapped up in a blanket, which she normally does at night. Mm-hmm. But she's wrapped up in a blanket, standing in the doorway, looking into the living room, looking up at something. <laughs> Just completely frozen, like a statue, looking up at something about six feet tall. Yikes. Oh, boy. And I just like... You get spooked I was like, so easily, Tom, when when you get worked oh. up. Uh, <laughs> and I was all worked up, Tim, because I had to do this, uh, this uh, Sunday Scaries thing. So I'm laying there and I'm like, all right, she's going to come back inside. And then finally I was like, Ginger. And normally that's all it takes, but she doesn't even look. And now I'm like, all right, Ginger. Wait, you didn't Ginger. get up to scope it out? No. Too afraid? I don't want, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like calling her name and she's not coming in. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to go out there and get her. Um, And, I, and I'm like, I'm going to have to go out there and get her. And I can see... She's looking at at such an angle that there's either somebody standing in the middle of our living room or there's somebody floating outside the window. <laughs> either way, I I couldn't be less interested. What would you have preferred? A real life person <laughs> in front of you in your living room or a specter outside the window? I think a specter outside yeah, okay. the window, They're right? Just making sure. Yeah. Because a person inside, that's a legitimate thing that can happen. <laughs> that you have to do something about, too. <laughs> exactly. Like that, all of a sudden, it would be all hell would break yeah, loose. Yeah, Spectre, you and, can close the curtains and just hope for the best. <laughs> right. And if it's like a vampire, they have to be invited in. And right. if it's a 
little vampire tapping on my window like, hey, let me come in. Mm. Like, no way, Jose. I know your deal. I know that accent. <laughs> I know that Transylvanian <laughs> accent anywhere. Um, and where they were in the living room slash kitchen, they would have been right near that new uh, magnetic knife strip. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it would have been awful. They would have been able to grab five different <laughs> knives if they wanted to. You should to. move that magnetic knife strip <laughs> into the bedroom with you when you go to I, bed every night. I mentioned that to my girlfriend that it should be right above right above our headboard so yeah. you know you don't even have to get out of bed to grab it have you ever considered uh having a weapon uh by your side while you sleep at night um i've considered it but i've never done it yeah same i mean yeah, i'm, I'm not, thinking I'm... like a, ba- a bat a baseball bat yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's what I would I would do too, like a little uh bat or baton or something. Yeah. But I feel like baton, <sighs> not even the freaking uh <laughs> Yeah, Tim, I'm a cheerleader. I'm in the <laughs> cheer squad. Um <laughs> all I can think of is what are you in the parade? <laughs> uh, um, but I don't I don't think it's a great idea to have a weapon right by your bed because when you're in your bed, you're asleep and then you wake up and you're disoriented. Yeah, and you're you're very easily spooked in the middle of the night. So I could see you kneecapping your girlfriend with a baton <laughs> and she's exactly. getting a glass of water. Yeah, so so it's like, actually, I don't know where my weapons are currently. Yeah. I mean, this is why, I mean, Tom, this is why I tell you. If you're gonna have this many illegal guns, you have to keep track of them. I don't have any any guns, legal or illegal. Um, but also, like, I feel fairly confident. You know, a New York City apartment, like our doors, uh, metal, and it yeah. has a deadbolt. Like, I feel like it would take more than one kick to get it down. <laughs> right, and uh, I would hear that. So, anyway, I finally walk out into the living room. And she doesn't even react to me. She's mm. still just staring into space. But at least I can see there's nothing human beings can see. You right. know, it's. Uh, is that worse, though? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's worse than seeing something. Tim, if I saw something, I'd have to move. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. At least at least with this, I can be like, oh, the crazy dog just being crazy. But I had to like tap her and it was like she was in a trance. And then she was like, oh, where am I? Uh, so what's the verdict? Do you just have a weird dog? Your yeah, dog is know. weird. Yeah, but she's not weird in that way usually. Right. She's mm. weird in, in plenty of other ways, but she's never really done that before, right. uh, which is why it was alarming. But also like- Has she been I acting more- like her since, herself since? She's been uh, floating since oh, then. brother. <laughs> And her eyes turned red. But um, no, I I was more worried about a paranormal thing than a, like a, a prowler. Because if there was somebody stand, if somebody had broken into the apartment and they were standing in the middle of the room, uh, she would have gone over to them. <laughs> she would have gone out to them tail wagging like, oh, hi, yeah. I'm Ginger, pet me. Unless, uh, yeah, I mean... I guess she's that way with me. Um, does she bark at, at people the way that she barks um, at me? No, she only like the way she barks at you is the only way she barks at people, which okay. is like, I want attention. Right. Not as a like, I'm so frustrated. It's now coming out as a bark. Dog. <sighs> Your dog's weird, Tom. I don't. I don't want to be yeah. the guy to tell you this, but you got a weird dog on your hands. I know I've got a weird dog. I need you to tell me, Tim. I don't even tell you half the weird things she does <laughs> during the day. So, well, 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 so did you just like not sleep the rest of the night? Yeah, pretty much. And like by this point, my girlfriend had woken up, and. uh you know, it was one of those situations of like when I came back in, she's like, what's going on? And it was like, eh, you probably don't want to know the actual <laughs> answer. <laughs> well, that's that's the worst thing you could say to her. Yeah, not, not like, oh, Ginger wanted water and I had to go to the bathroom. 
It's like, no, oh no, I didn't even, I didn't even hesitate. I immediately told her because I sleep closer to the door. The demon's going to get me. Right. So now, she should know. How does she feel about things like this when uh, you're up all night afraid of demons <laughs> and it affects her sleep in some way? Yeah, well, then she hides my books from me. I'm not allowed to read my scary books anymore. One time I got a graphic novel uh, version of some Edgar Allan Poe stories when I was a child. <laughs> I was in like second grade. Uh-huh. Oh, and I was reading that and I was enjoying it. But then it, it concurrently happened with uh, me finding out about the ghost in the movie Three Men and a Baby. <laughs> And that freaked me out. Which is not a real ghost. Yeah, I know, but that freaked me out. No, it's the ghost of a kid that killed himself in in that very apartment. Um, and so, like, you, I had trouble sleeping. You mentioned that, like, like, these two things tie in together. Well, like, no, this is the thing. This well, is the of thing. course, three men and a baby is adapted from an Edgar Allan Poe original story. No, 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 this is the story. thing. I'm going somewhere with this. So okay. it just so happened, like, the, the day or the week that I'm reading this Edgar Allan Poe graphic novel... Mm-hmm. is the week that I find out about Three Men and a Baby, it gives me nightmares. Like, I'm freaked out about Three because that's real life. Um, and so I'm not sleeping well, and I'm, you know, like seven or eight years old, so my uh-huh. parents are just like, we're going to have to take away that Edgar Allan Poe book. He's uh, no, he's freaked that's... out by it. And I was so furious, but I also couldn't tell them, like, no, I'm afraid of the movie Three Men and a Baby, because then I can't yeah. watch Ted Danson movies or Steve Gutenberg movies ever again. <laughs> yeah, actually, what I need you to do is get rid of this uh, Ted Danson life-size cutout that I have in my room. Right? That's what the ghost is? That's yeah, what's behind the curtain? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. It's never been proven. Most people still think it's a ghost. God, they they probably thought like, God, our kid's such a nerd. He's getting scared by Edgar Allan Poe. I know, and really, it's uh, Ted Danson all along. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what do we what have we learned from from this? Dan? maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should be braver men. <laughs> Tim, it's Banana Week here. I think we got everything. Um, couldn't tell you why. <laughs> Seems just, as good a topic as any, I guess. Yeah. I, I was kind of surprised we've never talked about bananas. Where would you say bananas rank in your uh, uh, fruits of choice? Ooh, Tom. In your fruits of the loom, as it were. I would, if, you had to, if you had to fill a loom with fruits. What do you think a loom is? That... I, in my mind, I think it's a cornucopia <laughs> yeah. because that's what is in the fruit of a loom. No, but but the underwear is the fruit of the loom. It's the fruit that the loom has produced. Has produced. I never thought of it that way. I also thought that cornucopia. That <laughs> what is a cornucopia? Yeah. What is that? A uh, like, it's a thing. It, it, it's just like a, a basket, kind of. Where do they get that cone from? Uh, I think it's woven. I think it's all huh. like a, like a bas- like a wicker basket. Hmm, that might be a fruit of the loom also. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they make that with a loom, no. No, I guess not. You're, I saw a big loom one time. It was, it was, it was in all honesty, not that exciting. <laughs> Uh, I don't well, like bananas very much, Tom. I'm si- look. Really? I think for a long time I told myself they'd be up near the top, but I think that's just because you learn about like apple, banana, which <laughs> 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 is one of the basic fruits yeah, exactly. you learn about. Exactly, orange, um, lemon. Even though we never ate lemons, you know. It's, um, yeah, I mean the the basic fruits in America, eat, at least that you eat. Apples, bananas, grapes, oranges. Uh, Tom, by, I think you forgot. By hand. Tomatoes. But you don't bite into, I'm saying like that you eat raw just right. as is. Mm-hmm. And then you've got your peaches, your nectarines. Plums. I mean, there are hey, others. don't forget plums, Tom. I, Tim, I, you didn't let me get to, to plums. I was going to say plums. Um, but. But those are those are more secondary. I mean, maybe if you're if you're in uh, certain parts of the country, 
certain ones are going to be more popular. Like peaches are more popular in the South because they grow in the South. Right. Uh, but but for the average American Joe, apples, bananas, oh, strawberries. I guess there are a lot of fruits out there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I got to say, but now this might have something to do. I re- realized like fairly recently that mm-hmm. um, whenever I eat a banana, I have trouble taking deep breaths for a while. So I think oh, really? I'm probably mildly allergic to them, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess it's I fair mean, to cer- not like them in that case. Yeah, that certainly sounds like it. I mean, you're not supposed to have trouble <laughs> taking deep breaths after any kind of food. Yeah. Um, and I like, like you were saying, Tom, really, mm. I'm the same way. I'm very bad at like, cause and effect with my body if i like feel weird i'll never be like what what could have caused this weird like, feeling like, oh, i guess i don't like bananas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if that's the way my body's reacting but um i i will say as a um convenient portable snack mm-hmm. um you could do worse than a banana it's definitely the the best portable fruit because it's the only portable fruit that it, you're not going to get messy eating it. Right. Yeah. Like eat, all, eat, an orange. Eat an orange. Yeah. Sticky hands. Yeah. Um, Even an apple can be too juicy and you can get some apple eh, juice on you. I'm, I'm not worried about that aspect of an apple. I just think it doesn't travel well because it doesn't have its own protective uh, carry in case the way that a banana not, it, and right an and not only is. that but bananas bruise i guess or, or apples bruise but i yeah. guess bananas bruise too also bananas uh, are bs i just bought bananas for the first time in a long time <laughs> i guess i should stop eating bananas and buying them <laughs> if i'm determined <laughs> that i'm allergic to them and i don't really like them but did you buy them because of this episode no or i bought them like, like a week ago um oh, all right but I had to buy them green, and that's the other thing about bananas. You're always, like, working on their s- schedule, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, you can't just buy it and be like, all right, this will be good if I want to eat it right when I get home or if I want to eat it four days from now. It's going to be fine. This is just, right. like, you have to, like, inspect the color, and it's just like, well, maybe if I, you know, I, I can buy this banana but not that banana because if I don't eat that banana and by Tuesday, that banana is going to be bad, but I can't eat this banana before Monday evening. It's enough. Let me live my yeah, life, a lo- bananas. <laughs> a lot of it is kind of like, all right, uh, well, I hope I'm in the mood for a banana Wednesday afternoon because that's when this banana is going to be perfect. And then you read all this bullshit that's like, oh, just put it in a, pl- a paper bag with an apple. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do stuff like that. And I don't think it works anyway. And if I put it in a paper bag with an apple, I'm probably going to forget about it. And then <laughs> I've ruined the the banana and the apple. I thought you were going to say, if I put in a paper bag with an apple, God knows what I'm going to find in there when I open it back up. Yeah, you don't, you, um, <laughs> you don't put those two together in yeah, an enclosed you wind space. Up with yeah. some, some, something that you, you have to put down because it's an abomination. <laughs> it, can't, it can't breathe on its own. It can't survive. Uh, I, I'm thinking about that because I saw like one of these... Uh, cows with three eyes just got born again <laughs> what newspaper are you reading <laughs> that this is news a newsworthy news. event <laughs> and you know it's what i forget what country it was in but you know it's like ah people this is are international to, news yeah people are are flocking to worship it oh, and it's like ah, it's just like a, a birth defect that that poor calf's yeah, like that poor calf should have immediately been been put down, but right. now people are flocking to worship it, so it's just gonna like struggle breathing for a week before it dies. Um, Thanks for bringing bananas. it up, Tom. Yeah, bananas. <laughs> we're, talk- we're talking about bananas, not mutant cows. Um, so yeah, definitely the easiest of the fruits to bring around. I was gonna say grapes are also not too messy as long as you're not fucking around with them trying to eat the skin off and then eat them yeah but you can't throw a bunch of grapes into a backpack and and right you'll wind up with a backpack backpack full of wine yeah i mean if you leave it long enough yeah 
And if you have uh, yeast in your bag, which I do you usually need yeast do for wine. Um, I think so. I think you need something to react with the sugars. Oh, you just needed grapes and thyme. No natural no, fermentation. No, I think you'll. I mean, I'm sure in like certain situations that mold would event or uh, like yeast would eventually get in there or something. Yeah. But I mean, no, I think you need to add yeast. Not in the wine that I make, but because the, the, yeast, the yeast is what turns the sugar. It eats sugar and poops out alcohol. Right. God, can you imagine if that were uh, people? That'd be great. Why well, you'd start eating all your day? Poop. You eat candy all day, and then your poop gets you all messed up. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure your poop would get you all messed up, Tom, if, if, if that's what you're after. Not in a good way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So bananas. Um. Do you know about how to how to slow down the ripening process? Mm, put it in the refrigerator, maybe. Tam, don't put it in the refrigerator. That's one. Actually, that does slow it down. But uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to find where it is in in my notes. It's it it can be very bad for bananas. It, it'll turn <laughs> it'll turn your bananas uh, uh, brown and black, or at least like the outside. It sounds like the inside sometimes okay. So but... who cares? I'm not. I'm not l- l- looking for status. Oh, I need a perfectly yellow banana. Otherwise, the other kids will get, laugh at me. As long as the inside's fine. Not mushy. Yeah, but I don't know. The outside still, because I've done this a few times where I've stupidly frozen bananas without peeling them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a few times, Tom? That should be a mistake you make <laughs> once. <laughs> I ba- Look, the bananas were overripe, and I panicked and threw them in the freezer. Uh, because then they turned not only did they turn black, then you like can't peel them either. Yeah, because they're all frozen. <laughs> yeah, the peel gets stuck to it. Yeah, uh, in a in a way that's unappetizing. I have bananas a few times a week, Tim. Really? Yeah. I take it you are I... not allergic to them. <laughs> I don't think so. They don't make me feel bad. Do you breathe as normal once you eat them? <laughs> sure do. Unless I've cho- unless I try and eat them all in one go, yeah, and then, I've yeah, seen that happen. That happens with like most foods with you, though. Um, but I I uh, mix them into a smoothie. They're they're great for a smoothie. They really, are. really thickens up a smoothie. Agreed, Tom. And, oh, go ahead. Well, and I was gonna say, uh, my girlfriend eats them most mornings. Uh, she makes toast and then peanut butter on the toast, and then sliced up bananas on there. Bananas and peanut butter, great combination, huh? Yeah, Tom. I used to eat a breakfast all the time where uh, it was uh, bananas, mm-hmm. eggs, and yeah. peanut butter, and you mash mm. it all up in a skillet, Ew. and you cook it, and it's great. Is it? Yeah. I don't know if that... Banana and egg doesn't sound good. But it's like scrambled eggs with a with a... Uh, with bananas filling it out. I'm telling you, yeah, Tom, try but... it. <laughs> and, and peanut butter. I said butter. banana and eggs don't sound good together, and you're like, yeah, but this is like eggs and then banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did I did I sell you on it? <laughs> and then no, afterwards, you can't disgusting. breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you're enjoying it. You're in the beetle. You're gasping for air. Everybody's having a great time. <laughs> Um, Tim, one of the uh, one of the reasons why I think bananas are so good in smoothies is uh, bananas can't be juiced. Right. There's no juice in a banana. They say the same thing about me. There's no juice in you. They can't juice me. <laughs> um, I distinctly remember Tim when we were when we first became roommates. Like I don't know, an insanely long time ago. Now. Um, we, one of the first big purchases we went in on together was a juicer, a Jack LaLanne juicer. Yeah, why did we do that? I, well, I mean, this should give you an idea of how long ago this was. Jack LaLanne was still alive and selling <laughs> juicers. <laughs> Jack LaLanne was still with us. He was still selling juicers and pulling tugboats with <laughs> he, his, with he his was teeth. He 30 years old. He was in the prime of his life. Um... 
But I just remember distinctly that this juicer had like multiple warnings on the juicer and in the instruction manual about juice and bananas. Yeah. You think that you can't juice bananas. All you're going to do is make a mess and ruin this thing right. if you do that. Then we had a, a, a roommate who used the juicer and never cleaned it out. And then fruit flies lived in the juicer. <laughs> yeah. And you could juice fruit flies, though. Yeah, it turns out... Uh, they had a nice uh, little color to the... To, to yeah, any. I'm pretty sure she did juice some fruit flies. Yeah, the juicer... Like, juicers are great, but uh, they're a lot of work because all it's... It's not... Yeah, I guess technically it is juicing things, but, like, what it's doing is separating, like, fiber from juice. Mm-hmm. So it's you taking still have to... all the good stuff for you out of the equation so you could drink the sugar water. <laughs> exactly. But that good stuff doesn't... If you think it tastes bad in the fruit or vegetable to begin with, boy, it tastes really bad once you take uh, all the flavor out of it. Yeah. But you got to throw that stuff out. And our roommate at the time did not understand this at all. Huh. Those were simpler times, Tom. We drank a lot of juice for like a couple weeks and then forgot about it because nobody wanted <laughs> yeah, to clean you, it. None of us had a ton of money either. So yeah. it was like, like, why am I spending all this money on <laughs> fruit Fresh that I'm then... <laughs> <laughs> like, and it wasn't even filling. We were taking the fiber out of it. We were taking, no. so we were spending a lot of money on fresh fruit. We went to the fancy uh, grocery store around the the block. Yeah. We weren't going to like a cheap fruit market. We probably, should, you know, and, and then you don't so even get like, a meal out of it. <laughs> you, no, you know, glass it's like of- I spent eight dollars on all these carrots, and now I have a shot glass worth of carrot juice to drink. And then we go to the bar and drink 15 beers every night. <laughs> yeah, it was like, surely this will undo the <laughs> massive damage that I'm putting on my body every day. Uh, we don't have any, uh, we don't have very many more years ahead of us, do we, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> not at this rate. <laughs> not with you eating things you're allergic to and not understanding that. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. Tom, it's Athletic Greens. Yeah. I started taking Athletic Greens, Tom, because I wanted to get all of the vitamins that I need, and I hate taking a a, a pill every morning, Yeah, one of those horse pills. Yeah, I I wanted a supplement that I could ideally drink that tastes great, Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see what all the hype was about about Athletic Greens, Tom. I heard you talking about it last week. Yeah. <laughs> In the ad last week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is this stuff, Tom? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the dang things. Tom? Yeah. Every morning I wake up. This isn't part of my new routine, Tom. Mm-hmm. 2022 Tim wakes up before I have a sip of coffee. Mm-hmm. I, I mix up a, a, my athletic greens. I take that. I drink some water. Yeah. I, I mix it up in water and I drink that. Gives me a little jolt of energy, makes me feel great, Tom. And yeah. I know that I've uh, I've got it all covered for the day. Exactly, Tom. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, it's good for you, Tom. Yeah, it's just tons veggies. of people. Yeah, and uh, tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. That's also true. You know, sometimes you get these multivitamins, and you're yeah. just like, what is this? Is there sawdust in here? There's probably just sawdust in here, right? <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes. Who knows? Um, it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit, Tom. Yeah. Um. And Tom, it's it's a climate neutral certified company. I like that. That's it. That's important to me, Tom. Yes. 
Look, right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash guide. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash guide to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Tim, what's the most famous animal that likes eating bananas? Tom, let's not beat around the bush. It's a dang monkey. You're talking about a monkey. It's a monkey. Monkeys love bananas. However, did you know monkeys rarely encounter bananas in real life, like outside of uh, humans giving them to them? Uh, Well, they have to go on a jungle adventure, it seems like, and then they find bunches of the bananas in the trees, and they collect them. Who? The monkeys or me? The monkeys. Oh, okay. No, Haven't they you ever don't played do Donkey that. Kong Country? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that, hmm. Yeah, this Wikipedia article I read about <laughs> bananas did not mention uh, the evidence to the contrary that monkeys do find bananas in nature. Well, I guess it's not really nature. They were inside of, like, crates and stuff. Yeah. Well, no, sometimes they're just hanging or in just trees. Or just suspended in the air. Yeah. What was that supposed <laughs> Over a to chasm. be? Those bananas in the game and the, and the coins in... Super Mario Brothers, mm-hmm. were they just like floating in air? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they ever really got too into it. I think mm. they were like, "Look, if you believe the rest of this shit, maybe all will be. Maybe there'll be a backstory in the new Super Mario uh, movie starring Chris. Yeah, Pratt. maybe Chris Pratt yeah. will explain it to us. Uh, that'd be nice. That'd be great. People, you think he's gonna do an Italian voice or no? No, he's not. But nobody could do an Italian voice. Like the, they could, they can't make a whole movie with like an Italian stereotype voice. Um, <laughs> in the main character. Well, people want him to use. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but the guy who does Mario's voice. Yeah. But I think they underestimate how in, how quickly annoying that would get when it's not just a. Hoo-hoo! Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. Did you hear that? So everybody's upset because Chris Pratt is also doing uh, the voice of someone else. Oh um, yeah, who? Yeah, some other uh, character. And people are people are furious. I don't know, the, not the Grinch. That's uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I read. Oh Garfield. Oh yeah. Weird. Yeah. And also like, oh God forbid we. <laughs> ruin garfield's legacy like people are acting like <laughs> they, they, they're they oh i'm a big garfield guy and i'm pissed that chris pratt's gonna do that voice i mean i still just don't understand the celebrity uh like vo- voice over work just because it's like chris pratt for mario and garfield is there anybody out there who's like i wasn't gonna see this mario movie but i'm a big chris pratt fan um, I think it's so parents will be like, okay, like I know this guy. If I'm gonna yeah. go see this versus some like kids movie where a guy who's not in the Avengers movies uh, <laughs> is, is is in this, I guess I'll I pick guess, this one. I think that's what they like, what Hollywood thinks, but I don't think that's reality. I think in reality, you telling me these Hollywood execs don't know what they're doing. They're disconnected from real people. I don't think anybody goes to any of these movies or or rents them or anything based on the celebrity voices. And I think they could make these movies so much cheaper if they didn't pay these uh, celebrities uh, massive amounts of money. The other thing is, Tom, I do think like, have you ever seen like one of these animated movies like the computer animated movies that don't have any celebrities and you're just like no i don't think so you're you're like this movie looks tra- like trash so it like legitimizes <laughs> well, them in a way that it's like yeah oh, there's real people would, involved with this and they can do a junket and they can like people will want to write articles about this person so they'll have to mention yeah uh, this stupid- i mean i was going to say that i guess all these you know like this new mario movie they're already, I'm sure, spending a fortune on the actual computer-generated stuff. So it's probably like, eh, it's a drop in the bucket to get 
yeah. to get uh, Chris Pratt in here. You want to know a gossip item I read, Tom, in the, in the gossip what? pages? Uh, ooh, what's Tim? Of course I do. Um, they're like, uh, hey, you wonder why uh, Chris Pratt's getting so many voiceover roles? Um, might be due to the fact that he's the hottest actor actor in Hollywood right now. <laughs> um, but all of the movie sets have vaccine requirements. Oh, but you know yeah. what doesn't? A voiceover booth. Yeah, a voiceover studio mm. wouldn't, huh? Yeah. Well, that would explain why he's taking... Yeah, so I guess that's what they're saying, that yeah. like he's getting job offers, but being like, I won't get that dang vaccine. Yeah, and so he's just like, sure, I'll, I'll make, you know... How much do you think yeah. he's making to be Mario? Like $30 million or something? No, probably not that much, but it's probably like $5 million for like a week's work. Yeah. Week's work. Um, do you think there's a, a chance that uh, his father-in-law might hold him down and force the vaccine into him? Yeah, his, his father-in-law is pro-vax, right? Yeah, yeah, he's very pro-vax. Hmm. And, and also, like, he's... He's talked about his father-in-law is a uh, uh, famous strongman, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for anybody that's not familiar. Former Mr. Universe. You may remember him from the movies such as Hercules in New York. Former, former and current Mr. Universe. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think he's he's even talked about uh, the the Arnold, the fact that he's like, I am older, I am at risk for COVID, even though yeah, like, right. yeah, he's, he's <laughs> winking. He's like, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I, I'm going to get think sick. Yeah. <laughs> Me, Arnold. He, I think he's doing a genuinely good service of like, hey, other 70 year old people that think you're going to be fine. I don't think I'm going to be fine. Right. And I guarantee you, you don't look like me. Right. So go get vaccinated. So anyway, as you were saying, dumb monkeys like bananas. <laughs> monkeys like bananas, but they don't find them in the wild. Right. But and here's, have you seen about like uh, how like uh, peel a banana like a monkey? Every once in a while, it goes uh, viral that like, viral. oh, you're peeling bananas the wrong way. The banana yeah. experts, monkeys, do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <Bananas>. up. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing. It's all like a false premise because we've all been led to believe who knows bananas better than monkeys. Yeah. And guess what? And it turns out monkeys like bananas because we gave them bananas at a zoo and they were like, great, of course. You give monkeys anything, they'll like it. And I'm sorry. I'm, I know that monkeys have like <laughs> hands like ours or whatever, yeah. but we still have better motor skills than fucking mon a monkey can't like <laughs> drive a car. So we're going to peel a banana the same way. Uh, I think you could probably train a monkey to drive a car. That I wish somebody would try. I mean, especially nowadays with like all this like uh, self-driving stuff. Like everybody, everybody's like, well, where are we going to get to like the completely autonomous car? I want to know where are we going to get to a car that's good enough for a monkey to drive it? Yeah, that's true. And that might be, you know, the, <laughs> there are things they're like, uh, you're never going to have a hundred percent perfect self-driving car, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're always going to, but can you and have it close enough <laughs> that you, every, every new Tesla comes with a monkey, uh, that's there. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? Just for emergencies, just for just <laughs> right. to take over when the car doesn't know what to do. That's when the yeah, monkey steps in. And if you're not using the automated driving, there's a compartment that the monkey goes in, and it's very nice. He's happy. He's happy. He's in happy. There. It takes up a majority of the car. <laughs> <laughs> you have to it's dump a in uh, a bunch of bananas every six hours. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you know when you're when you're uh, recharging the Tesla, it takes a while anyway. So you got plenty of time, to, <laughs> plenty of time to feed the monkey while you're doing it. Those Tesla superchargers, they can also have like a you know a banana trees next to them. Yeah, no, they can just the there monkey. could be another hose that just uh, has like banana puree that he can just oh, mainline yeah. to you know. Yeah, two ports on the new Teslas: That's one for it. electricity, one for <laughs> banana puree. Um. Yeah, but monkeys, the whole thing with monkeys is that they, like, flip the banana over. <laughs> what? 
What are you laughing at? It's a good idea. <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, that monkeys flip the banana over and they peel it from the bottom. What are you laughing at? <laughs> are you just laughing at the idea of a car coming with a monkey? No, we've been talking about the way, the way a monkey eats a banana for 15 minutes. Well, and now I'm finally going to explain how to eat it. <laughs> Turn it upside down and peel it from the bottom. <laughs> the whole thing is they do this so they don't break the stem off. Well, I don't break the stem <laughs> off either because I'm not a fucking moron. <laughs> when I peel a banana, I do a good job <laughs> every time. <laughs> and I'm sick of hearing that a monkey is going to do it better than me. That's what I'm saying, too. Like, stop telling, hey, oh, you're doing it wrong. I'm not doing it wrong. I'm doing it the way a human does, and, and we figured yeah, it out. maybe a monkey's doing it wrong. Yeah, that should be the default. We should assume that the monkey's doing everything wrong. <laughs> yeah, when have you ever heard about a monkey doing anything right? Except making people laugh. Yeah. Curious um, George, he's causing problems for freaking everybody he encounters. Yeah, you think uh, you think uh, the man with the yellow hat's got a license for Curious George? No, he's no, stole- he's one of yeah. these. He's one of these guys. Every time the man with the yellow hat comes into a store with Curious George, the owner's like, "Oh Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> this guy again, the goddamn monkey." Yeah, and uh, and th- this monkey makes a mess. It shits all over my store. The guy does go- a bad job it- even watching it the monkey. It goes in like the the stock room and uh, without without permission. Um, yeah. like the restaurant next door. He just goes into the kitchen and starts touching all the food. Yeah, and this guy's not even paying attention. He's dressed like an asshole. He's dressed obviously like somebody who wants a lot of attention, yeah. but then doesn't want to doesn't want to give attention to his monkey. Yeah, the monkey is. I'm just sick a of it. Pull all the freaking cancel accessory. the man in the yellow hat. That's what I say. <sighs> Pull all those books. Let's <laughs> burn them. Tim, another thing that uh, frustrates me about bananas is the idea that I feel like our entire life they've been telling us bananas are going to go extinct. Yeah. What is that about? The, the, There's like, oh, this so is one specific type of banana that is in yeah, danger. So the, the banana that most people eat in America is a Cavendish banana. Okay. And the the reason is I didn't know this, but like wild bananas out there, they're full of freaking seeds. Oh, like really? Hard, yeah, like big hard seeds. This is why most fruits suck, right? Seeds, yeah. Seeds. When you ever buy grapes and then you realize, oh, they're seed. Oh, th- these are seeded grapes. They're not seedless. Yeah. Who the hell has time oh, for oh, that? The, yeah. Oh, these are a, a death trap. These are yeah. a choking hazard. I've bought instead. Just, have you ever seen uh, like Renaissance paintings of watermelons? Though <laughs> I have not. Well, you should come to the museum sometime with me. Well, you're always like inviting to... me out to the museum. I just, I'm just not into art, Tom. They're they're like Renaissance paintings of watermelons, and these like watermelons back during the Renaissance look like shit. Too they're many like seeds. Way too many seeds, and they're like all rind, mm. uh, like barely anything to eat in inside there. Uh, so we've like bred watermelons to be much better. We did that with bananas, but the problem is because these bananas that the Cavendish, since they don't have seeds, all we're doing is like cloning these bananas over and over and over again. So because they're not uh, being pollinated and like regrowing, we're just taking like a, what do you call it? Like an offshoot and then, um, uh, you know, like grafting it onto something else and having it grow. So it's like all essentially from like the same plant. No, I don't see any so, problem with this. Well, the problem is, Tim, they, the, you know, the, the, the banana you had today that, that, uh, stopped you from breathing for a few minutes, essentially genetically identical to the banana that stopped you breathing 30 years ago. Okay. But people see this as a, as a problem. 
Well, the problem is that there are multiple, uh, like, uh, what you call it, like funguses and stuff that attack bananas. Yeah, okay. And because these bananas are all genetically the same, they can't evolve they can't to develop, have yeah. any kind of resistance against it. So basically, they've been saying like it's a matter of time before this spreads like crazy to to all the bananas, and then that's just it. All the Cavendish bananas are gone. And the reason why they say this is because this has uh, happened before. Uh, and the I'm bananas find... came back. So not so smart, no. are you? This was, uh, uh, well, so one of the things they're afraid of is Panama disease. And uh, this isn't the same Panama disease that uh, Van Halen was uh, singing about. I was, I was about to ask if it was the same disease that <laughs> Van Halen was singing about in Panama. Um, so it, uh, yeah, it, like cuts off the flow of water and nutrients, causing the plant to wilt uh, and exposing, wow, exposing the rest of the plant to lethal amounts of sunlight. But get get this, Tim. Prior to 1960, almost all commercial banana production was centered on Gross Michael. That was the name of the uh, the bananas everybody was eating, or Gross Michel. Gross Michel. Yeah, Gross Michel. G R O S space M I C H E L. Okay. Uh, and Gross Michel was very susceptible to uh, to Panama disease. Uh, so the, the Cavendish was chosen as a replacement, uh, because it, it produced like a higher quality fruit and, uh, but two things about this, apparently the gross Michelle was, uh, easier to ship. Like it, it wasn't as like fragile and shipping. And some people claim, of course, cause it was, you know, the sixties, that gross Michelle's tasted better than Cavendish's. And then they got you high. No, that's they made you I, trip balls. I've I've got something to say about that later, but um the Cavendish <laughs> We might not have time because we talked about <laughs> monkeys eating bananas for <laughs> far too long. All right, I'll bring it up pretty soon then. But uh uh no, I mean the gross Michelles like went out, so they had to you know uh, switch to the Cavendish. And the problem with the with the Cavendish is that at some point they're like we're gonna have to switch to a different banana, and mm -hmm. the other varieties. It seems like the varieties of bananas it like goes down in in taste as, as uh, you know they they get affected. Tom, I'll tell you one thing. They'll figure this out. They'll they'll crack this. They'll get a they'll get a new type of banana. These monsters, and it's going to be tastier than ever. They'll get the food scientists on it. Um, they will yeah. prioritize this above um, t taking CO two out of the air, or <laughs> protecting us, or uh, protecting yeah. the oceans. And we will have our 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 delicious bananas, Tom. The, God be forbid like, we've... the monkeys don't have their bananas. We've figured out a way to grow uh, the bananas that we use for Runt's candy. Ooh, at like We've, regular banana size, though? As full-size bananas. Uh, so no worries uh, about this. Yeah, I mean, I I still thought it was right around the corner, but they said, like, ah, oh, we're really worried about this in the next 10 to 20 years. It's like, you know what, 20 years from now, if I can't eat the same bananas, I'm sure I'll have other shit to worry about. It's fine. Yeah. Also on this banana page on Wikipedia, um, there's like a picture of a, an overripe banana on there because there's like a, a big section that explains like ripeness and how all that's determined and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking like, Who's the maniac that's like, oh, the, the Wikipedia page on bananas needs a picture of an overripe banana. Let me take it. Someone who wants that clout. Someone who wants that glory. <laughs> yeah. He's probably uh, rubbing elbows with Chris Pratt right now. Yeah. He's, he's you, you're, oh, what a loser. He's chilling on a private island, Tom. Unvaxxed yeah. and happy. <laughs> <laughs> um all right let me well tim let me talk about the idea that bananas can get you high because what you're referring to tim i'm afraid to tell you is 
colloquially known as the Great Banana Hoax of 1967. God damn it. <laughs> and you fell for it, Tim. I'm always falling for these hoaxes from the 1960s. First, I thought Paul McCartney died in a car accident. <laughs> Here we are, what, like 50, 50 years later, 55 years later, falling for the hoax <sighs> still. I'm just a mark, Tom. I'm an easy mark. Yeah. So the great banana hoax came about because uh, th- this was a time, this was during uh, like uh, uh, Vietnam War and stuff, and just like uh, a lot of civil unrest. Mm-hmm. Uh JFK had somewhat recently been blown away. I mean, what else, what else do we have to say? Yeah, so um, I'm, uh, I apologize for any beeps you might be hearing. I keep I keep getting these uh, text messages from Google that my account has been compromised. Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I just have to go to rest one dash mail slash live. I would think it would have been a Google dot com, but I guess uh, they're all out of those. Anyway, I'll, I've muted my mic so you don't get uh, these anymore. What was I talking about? Oh, the the great banana host <laughs> of 1967, of course. Um, one of these underground magazines that hippies love to read, they perpetuated it, and it just spread like wildfire. These underground magazines were basically the, the 4chan of the late 1960s. <laughs> these hippies were the worst. <laughs> Yeah, so they were just spreading this idea that, like, no, actually, if you take a bunch of banana peels, like, dry them out, and and I guess maybe grind them up, and then roll them into a doobie and smoke them, oh, boy, you're going to, you can get high. You can get high on your own supply. Apparently, there was, like, a run on bananas at the stores, like. um, That's that's a sign of a good hoax, Tom. It is a sign sign of a good good banana hoax. hoax. Um, maybe, uh, uh, one of these awful, awful companies like Chiquita or Dole that m- produces almost all the bananas came up with this idea. Right. Um, but, uh, it, it's not true, but I do wonder if part of that is because like weed was so bad in the sixties that it was just like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess just inhaling smoke. Yeah. I think it does I, make me yeah, feel kind of high. Something. Yeah. Talk about that. Uh, if I tried that, Tom, can you imagine how out of breath I'd be? <laughs> Tim, I think if you tried smoking banana peels, it would probably kill you. Yeah. I mean, if, if eating them makes it hard for you to breathe. I don't eat the peels, I imagine Tom. inhaling them into your lungs <laughs> would make it real bad. Um, But yeah, uh, and speaking of which, do you know about the term of Banana Republic? I, I do. I, I've heard of it. Um, it's where I get all my fancy dress shirts. <laughs> Tim, there's a different kind of Banana Republic. This is a Banana Republic run with an even tighter iron fist. It is a, a, a politically unstable country with an economy dependent upon the exportation of a limited resource product. Uh, so this specifically refers to, uh, I believe, Guatemala and Honduras. <clears throat> were uh, banana republics where basically you had these these companies coming in like the Cavendish banana was introduced or like I don't know discovered or bred around 1836 what <laughs> nothing go on <laughs> so you so you had all the you had these companies cropping up with these like 1800s businessmen I mean what do we know about 1800s businessmen they were ruthless they're slimy the, the slimy they didn't give a shit about anybody. Uh the they had uh, mustaches. This guy it stood uh, all over their faces. Well, one of these Big guys ten gallon uh, hats. Lorenzo Dow Baker. He was a uh uh captain of a of a schooner, and he realized that he could buy bananas in Jamaica, uh ship them up to Boston, sell them at a thousand percent profit. Mm. So, of course, they were like, well, let's go to these poor countries and uh, just make them grow bananas for us. We'll make so much money, especially compared to their economies. That's just like, no, we're just in charge. Like, 
we decide who who's going to be uh, in charge of the country. We decide the government. If we don't like the government, then we'll give uh, like a rebel organization a bunch of money to overthrow them to to install uh, you know a, a more favorable uh, company, and then you know then that country can never get out from under that right. company's thumb. Because anybody that tries to stand up to them, they'll just get leveled by Chiquita or Dole. So that's a banana republic, Tim. It's not just a a, a store in the mall. That's not a lot. That's not very fun, Tom. No, it's not very fun. You want to know what is fun? What's that? Oh, I know what you're going to say. Freaking banana peels, Tom. (laughs) Look, I might not like bananas, but I sure do love the peels and what they do to people. They make them slip. And you're not, and you're not, you should be clear, Tim, you're not talking about smoking them. No, no. I'm talking about, uh, you know, leaving them out on the street and then watching (laughs) somebody slip and fall. It is a funny thing because I feel like there's so many things as a young person you see in cartoons and you're, you know, like quicksand and you're very excited about to start encountering in real life. (laughs) And then it just never happens. Right. But banana peels, they do make people fall down if they step on them. They are very slippery. They are. Although, I have to say, every year at the New York City Marathon, I'm always very <laughs> oh, yeah, disappointed. Oh, because they're always <laughs> eating bananas. They're always eating bananas and throwing the peels on the ground. And I'm like, great, there's tens of thousands of people running <laughs> by this banana. <laughs> Someone's gonna slip on this banana peel, and it's gonna cause a, a massive uh, like somebody's gonna trip up. over them. Yeah, exactly. Never happens. Never saw it once. And they're and then uh, all collectively, they're all gonna slide to the finish line. <laughs> and, and someone not gonna set, know who won. They set a new world record because they just coast <laughs> in real quick. Um, yeah, Tom, uh, mm-hmm. you might think it's obvious that there's they cause people to slip because the one side, the outer peel is, you know. Yeah, slippery, slick. The inner peel is Moist. slick. Yeah. And the outer mm-hmm. peel is like grippy. Um, right. So, so it will catch, get stuck yeah. to your shoe. But uh, these scientists weren't content to leave it at that. They had to study it, Tom. And it turns out these uh, these Japanese physicists um, mm-hmm. won uh, the Ig Nobel Prize. The Ig Nobel oh, Prize. Oh, so not the Nobel Prize right. or Nobel Prize. <laughs> right. But it's also, those those are for like, you know, they sound silly. Like it's for discoveries uh-huh. that sound like they're, they're silly or stupid, but um, actually do have um, applicable. Practical usage. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it turns out, Tom, uh, mm-hmm. the, the substance on the inside are these little gooey sacks um, mm-hmm. that are uh, filled with polysaccharide follicular gel. Um, wow. And apparently they're going to use that stuff um, to uh, use uh, to make artificial joints for prosthetic limbs. Oh, wow. And it, and it doesn't um, like break down or whatever. No, that's why that's why it uh people people are going to have to <laughs> people are going to have to replace their uh, artificial limbs as as quickly as you have to replace bananas. <laughs> They're going to be like, "Ah, oh, this artificial limb's overripe now." <laughs> Just put it in a bag with an apple. Um I also want to talk about uh Wait, hold should on. We wrap can, up and then I'll talk about it. Can I talk about this one experiment that these scientists did which oh, makes me think uh, like when people are like we need to believe the scientists on everything which i believe <laughs> but also they're scientists um <laughs> but not all scientists the scientists first tested the slipperiness or friction of a banana peel on a linoleum plate um and uh and compared it with how much a shoe would slide on a banana free floor so basically, they were just like, let's see if a banana peel is more slippery than a shoe. Did you need to run an experiment there? Well, Watch a goddamn did, did Bugs they, Bunny cartoon for once in your life. Were they trying to find that out, or was it like, we're trying to see how much more slippery? Tom, guess what? There's video of them trying it out. When they saw that it was more slippery, they were all surprised. They were shocked. <laughs> 
Was it for like Japanese television? There was no video of it. I was just kidding, Tom. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was going to say, if you ever watch Japanese television, it's just all people being shocked at everything happening. <laughs> all right. I'm not, it's I'm a lot, I'm not it's prepared a lot of to go fun. down this road with you. <laughs> Um, if you like the show, you can find out more at tcgt.com. Hey, sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash complete guide. You can get episodes of, uh, uh, books, the podcast, uh, Tim and Tom go to the movies, a whole bunch of, uh, uh, back episodes, new episodes every week. There's also a tier for ad free podcasts. If you don't like ads, if you're anti-capitalism, um what what were you you're gonna an, say if you're anti-capitalist give us money instead of <laughs> exactly. listening to ads yeah yeah uh follow us on facebook facebook.com slash complete guy follow us on twitter at complete guide you can follow us on instagram at tcgte you can follow me on twitter and instagram at tom reynolds follow me at your pal tim and uh, also check out our, our subreddit, uh, reddit.com slash r slash TCGTE, where uh, people came out in droves after you you mentioned that uh, the weekly discussions uh, and uh, the the guy who used to guy I don't know if it's a guy or a girl who used to put. Oh, it is a guy. He, he told me his name uh, who you supposed uh, the weekly discussions. Mm-hmm. He uh, he he basically was like, yeah, I got tired of doing it, which is 100 percent fair. <laughs> yeah, uh, we but, weren't shaming him at all. Um, well, he did say you made fun of him because uh, Sublime was in his uh, username. I didn't make fun of him. He, he said last... he made fun of him for liking Sublime. Not last week, though. No, not last week, uh, earlier. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the Reddit, Discord, you can find the link to the Discord server on uh, tcgt.com. Tim, you know about, speaking of the internet, about uh, like the whole uh, banana for scale thing? The banana for scale? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's an inaccurate scale because bananas are all different kinds of sizes. That's true. Um, that's all part of the fun of the internet, though. But I didn't know that they also use the idea of a banana for scale for radiation. Did you know bananas are radioactive, Tim? What? No wonder bananas. they're uh, messing with my breathing. <laughs> <laughs> um, bananas contain uh, potassium. We all know about, and we're all happy about, but they contain potassium forty, which is a radioactive element, a ra- a type of radioactive potassium. Um, but they, so they they use this to kind of explain because, like, obviously, it's not a lot of radiation that um, uh, consuming uh, one banana is one percent of the average daily exposure to radiation that you get. Uh, 50 times less than a dental x-ray and 400 times less than taking a commercial flight across the United States. All of this is very troubling to me. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you get more radiation from a, a, a flight than from the dentist a ch- x-ray? Yes. This is troubling. A lot more. Yeah. Almost, almost 10 times as much, like eight times as much uh, radiation. Staying off airplanes. I haven't been on airplanes in a couple of years, and uh, I'm never going back. I've never been happier, Tom. I've never been happier is... than after these past two years. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird that, like, I don't know, it seems like they make a big deal about dental x-rays. They, they put a lead vest on mm-hmm. you, and they, they leave the room. I mean, I guess it makes sense if it's like, yeah, if you're a dentist and you're being a dentist for like 40 years, yeah, you shouldn't be in the room every time you're taking an x-ray. That will add up. Yeah, but do you need to put a freaking 150-pound lead thing over me? Yeah, when you're telling me like they don't do that at the at the supermarket if I'm buying 50 bananas. Right. They are well, like, hey, 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 easy, pal. You're not going to eat these all in one go without wearing a lead vest, are you? I mean, they're, they're concerned for you for other reasons. They're like, yeah, are you <laughs> that guy with the Tesla out there? You feeding, you feeding your monkey? <laughs> you, you, you know, that's not an official feature they've rolled out. I don't. 
I don't know how you created uh, an extra uh, yeah. uh, port in your Tesla. You see them calling monkey protective services. <laughs> Dude, that's the same as just regular animal services, which is, if I was a monkey, I'd be mad about. Yeah. Uh, also, the last important fact I wanted to mention that uh, a lot of people guess where a lot of people heard about at least like in in uh, like the West heard about bananas for the first time. The Jungle Book. No, Around the World in 80 Days. Oh, my favorite book of all time, Tom. And my yeah, favorite movie. Jules, Jules Verne was introduced the idea of bananas to a lot of people. Wow. Um, okay, that's, a, that's a lot of information. Hey, Tom. That's all you need to know about bananas. One more thing. Um, they're shaped like a wiener. What? Yeah. No. Look it up. All right. And you're going to have to give me some websites to check out. Yeah, I'll send you some links. All right. We'll see you next week. Put them in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put them in the show notes. All right. Great. We'll see you next week. That was a HeadGum Podcast.